2017 teardown video. So for 2017, we did a 18 foot tall mega tree, garage outlines, window, and roof outlines across the whole house. This was run with uh, one Falcon F16 and three uh, remote boards. Also ran five dumb RGB trees over here. Everything happens in this box. This is a toolbox. Some DeWalt waterproof. Out of here we have everything labeled, which pixel tree strands are which, 13, 16, 14, they're all labeled everywhere else. Using Cat6 weatherproof wire to run <clears throat> to the diff different uh, remote boards. You can see the Cat cable goes here and then just runs across. The E's all the way across. So these are all five volt pixels. Getting in on open, um, but yeah, we got the F16 over here. I did not use um, the outputs in a very efficient means, meaning I use all 16 ports, one for each strand. Uh, I could have zigzagged them and done other things, but first year, live and learn. We have two power supplies. Uh, each power supply is power six strands. Uh, every connector here has some kind of weatherproof grommet. Over here, these are the uh, four pin dumb RGB weatherproof connectors. All these Cat6 cables uh, are for the remote boards. I always call them distro boards, but that's not what it's called. Um, I don't know. So, we get the you know, this is out of the Falcon into the remote little board. Also on the Falcon, we have one cable run over to a DMX. This is the dumb RGB controller. Again, those go to the four port or four pin weatherproof connectors that go to the trees along the side there. Um, yeah, it's been pretty, pretty seamless. This is the input for into the Falcon from the laptop in the garage. I have 16 three pin connectors running around the perimeter of the box. These are all for the independent um, strands of the mega tree. We're also power injecting at the top. So people talked about power injecting every 50. Uh, I think a guy named John talked about doing it every 100 because if you do 100, then the voltage can kind of essentially go backwards. So that's what we're doing. This is one strand for the left and one strand for the right. Uh, we have a 24 inch tree topper that has 90. I think it has 90. Actually, it might have 190. Don't quote me. 190 nodes. That's on the output side of the 16th strand, so I think I think that has 100 on the string and then 90 for the star, so 190. Um, that works well. Let's close this up and then walk around to the other distro boards. We've got this tree, tree base with probably five foot legs. On the legs we have some Paper sand, 50 pound bags to hold it down. So 200 pounds. This this uh, section where the tree strands are zip tied to is just a um, free trampoline base that somebody was throwing away. It was a little bit too big, so I used a ratchet strap. See the orange strap going across. Just pulls it in a little bit tighter. I think it's a 14 foot trampoline. I have it. I think at 10 feet right here, so uh, I'll be looking for a little bit smaller trampoline base the off season. So 
Most of the distro boards have two ports um, being utilized of the four. This one right here goes across to that window and also goes to the garage outline, which is just not on for this song. So this garage outline is 390 pixels long. Um, and then that's where the power comes in to the pixels. Oh, this one was a little bit at least tricky for me my first year doing this. So here's, I think it's a 18 amp five volt power supply. You can see we're utilizing two outputs of the distro board. So we have power here coming in. This is the, the line right here going to, to the first pixel. You can see it goes in right there. And then it goes all the way up and across. So from here it's, what did I say, 390. So it goes across, down, put, put a little spacer here, up, across and down. So 390 is a pretty good, I don't know, maybe 30 feet from the power supply. So halfway up, I think right about this connection right here, we stop, we stop the power coming in from this side with that power supply. And then this box right here is nothing but power injection. I'm gonna use a uh, power, power board for this year. But right now they're all hardwired right into the power supply. So essentially you can see the four outputs to here and to there. These are the power injection spots. So it comes in here and injects power essentially right at where the last pixel. So this is the last pixel on that power supply. And the data is passed along as well as the ground. And then we're just adding power from this point forward and going all the way across. Every, every PVC pipe is drilled and they're all labeled on the insides. This is pipe one, pipe two, pipe three, pipe four, five, six, and seven. Uh, every pipe comes apart and has the weatherproof connection on top, so it's easier to store. So we're not storing 30 foot long PVC pipes. We're just storing 10 foot long PVC pipes. So I think some of these are cut down to eight. Um, so it's helpful, but that power supply essentially only injects for this garage. I probably could use a smaller one, but it works just fine. Uh, but if we take off this power supply power, you might not see it now, but essentially whatever song it is, this would be like the last pixel that comes on is that pixel right there. So the data gets passed along, but there's no power for the pixels, so the pixels turn off. So that's the first distro board. <clears throat> so we have a second distro board. I think again, distro board is the wrong term. I think it's receiver board is the right word. So you see a Cat6 cable coming out, and then that that board essentially does the roof outline and the window. And then we're also power injecting uh, into the window and also at the very peak of the roof. Um, you can see up there, I started with like the Bosco EO strips. They work. I don't think they're as clean as drilling the PVC pipe. Uh, so halfway through, I converted over to buying a drill press, making a jig to actually drill the PVC pipe. And here you can see maybe that that's where the power ends and then that pixel gets power going forward. So if I plug it back in. Which is hard to do with one hand, especially as the song goes on. But now because there's power to the rest of the pixels, as the data data comes in, it'll be passed around. So we're using two ports for that receiver board and then over here the other side of the house so this one we have this small roof line then we have a bigger roof line above and then we have two windows 
so we're using three ports on this receiver board. Port one goes to the small roof line right here, and that's power injected. And af after the output of this last pixel here goes into the input of this window right there. Again, uh, that one should be power injected. I still see the cable from here. And then we have another line, another run for the big roof, which is of course power injected. And then this one right here is another port. Um, so this one I could run one more prop off of its own port, or I have to start daily chaining out of a port into another one. Uh, and again, just so you can see the difference of using those Boscoyo strips, you still have to make your PVC pipe frame. And then you zip tie these, these strips essentially to the frame. It works okay. These are Ray Wu pixels over here. I use different, I use Ray and, and Paul. Uh, Rays have a four inch spacing and Paul's have a three. So the longer runs, I try to use Paul's pixels because that one inch over a longer period of time makes a difference. Um, but yeah, you can see we have two, two lines coming over here into this for the one prop. Um, this is data in, and this one is essentially power, power injection in, and we're injecting it somewhere up top. That right here. So right around, almost not quite the middle, because the middle would be over in that corner, but pretty close to the middle. Because again, when you power inject it here, power can go both directions to the pixels. So it doesn't make sense to inject every 50, because if you inject it every 50, arbitrarily it would be right here. You're literally going, you know, you don't really have that much room for voltage drop. So I did every 100 and didn't notice any problems whatsoever. You can definitely tell with the white lights um, where you need a power inject. So yeah, not the best video. First year doing X lights. Already bought a bunch more stuff for next year. And uh, yeah, hopefully they helped somebody. It was difficult. You can see the dumb, the dumb RGB trees going on right here. Uh, so these cannot be individually controlled. They're all or nothing with that DMX um, box in the toolbox. For next year, I'm going to be adding almost a thousand pixels of arches along this line. Long, long run. This run, I think, is close to 80 feet. So we're going to just do a bunch of pixels down here. Those three arches all the way down. It'll give some depth. Going to add some gutter outlines. Got a bunch of snowflakes coming around the window, a couple spinners, do the roof outline as well. We'll go up the side and across the back. I don't know, some other stuff, but it was fun. First year, a lot of questions. Thank you guys in the Facebook group for all the help. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video is helpful for somebody. Thanks.